Hi, everyone. My name is Leanne Lacapa from the Philippines. I am the CEO and co-founder of 2XU and I'm about to go into the online prosperity show with Prosper. We're going to go over a lot of the does and don'ts, basically, of how to have a virtual assistant or an executive assistant, why it's essential for you and your business, and how you can keep in touch with 2XU. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the CEO and co-founder of 2XU, Leanne Lai Lakaba. Leanne, how are you today? I'm very good, Frost. We're very, very excited for this show. Absolutely. And I know this is going to be an explosive show because you've been doing this ever since you were 15. So we're going to be trekking back to um you know how you actually got started and everything else that comes along the line now for our viewers back at home leanne has been the winner of the stevie award in 2021 as the employer of the year and also um uh, 2xu is an outsourcing company that actually specializes in 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 hiring managing and growing remote executive assistance for solopreneurs and small business owners. And the people that are in our audience are coaches and consultants that are looking to grow their businesses so that they're profitable and enjoyable. And the only way you can enjoy, um, you know, working in your business is when you have executive assistants that actually know exactly what it is that you um, need in your business and actually give you the right systems and tools to make that happen. Now, Leanne, I could go on and on singing your praises and um, accolades and everything else along the line. Tell us a little bit about how you actually got started and what it is that you do, um, you know, to assist these solopreneurs to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Yeah. So, um, like I said, I started when I was 15. Um, at that point, no one knew anything about working online <laughs> or that it was even possible. However, I was at that point, I was a budding journalist. I was what I had my own uh way way before of a uh, blog spot or blogger i'm not sure if you remember all of the, all the way before pretty wordpress even uh and i just had a blog that i was maintaining someone asked me like hey i need a ghostwriter to help me push out like content on my website i mean really like the way you write can you do it for me and of course no one was asking my age because um it was all online um i was paid through paypal using my mom's name basically since i couldn't have a paypal account under my name uh, and that's basically kind of how I started. Then I started getting gigs left and right. I would get like graphic writing, gig, uh, graphic writing gigs or video editing, basically anything in creation I was able to do and, and, and take off right off the bat. Uh, then um, dabbled a little bit in self-publishing my own book, which I did at 18. And then when I was uh, at, around the time when I was 18, I was about a month in, I uh, went through a category five storm here in the Philippines. It was like 350 kilometers per hour, something like that, where in our own home, I almost drowned. So I had a really bad PTSD afterwards. And I was like, okay, if this pans out, if working online is a thing, I don't have to be a lawyer where I have to be stuck to a desk. I don't have to do this or that. Basically, in the Philippines, the very Asian path of becoming a lawyer um, or a doctor or an engineer, um, my path, my mom said, was the uh, lawyer path. And I was like, okay, I'm going to try this out. I am going to, as I'm like going through therapists, I'm going through, um, you know, uh, getting medication basically from from getting the anxiety, everything else after that storm. Uh, and then I, I got a job as a basically just a remote um book editor for a used publishing company ended up running that publishing company about two years later just from sheer tenacity and uh bravery uh, so by then when i was 20 i was running it already and then when it came to the point of like i want to start like i want to start from scratch like i know know how to run a business i want to start from scratch but i want it to be a services business because i want to be able to bring back or give back to people the opportunity of being able to work from home because now I've created this uh, lifestyle that I have where I can travel anywhere uh, and then we started 2XU and, and since then um, 2XU just celebrated our, our third year last month uh, it's been just an amazing cool journey of me getting my fill of curiosity of how other businesses run and also helping helping those businesses run for longer. Fantastic and that's such a brilliant journey right there but um, Leanne, tell us a little bit about your life sort of growing up, because if you would have had 
you know, your brain straight at 15, that must have mean, you know, maybe the upbringing, um, you know, would have cultivated, uh, you know, such um, a desire for you to get started on your own moving forward. Yeah, so for me, I was the eldest of four, which meant that I was my mom, my mom's own second brain. I was her right hand woman. Um, so like anything that needed done in the house, my dad was working overseas, so it was really m- me and my mom. So I had that upbringing of already just being responsible for a lot of things, and I also had that desire for independence, that usual teenage like rebellion, but not really. Uh, I couldn't really do that for myself because I was taking care of uh, helping take care of my siblings. So. A lot of it was just that and then I saw my mom she also had like she had she had the steady you know she went through the usual Asian route of like having a steady job for um up, up until she passed away last year she did like 20 years in in service so basically basically before um as I was a baby um but, but at the same time as she was doing that she was doing so many side gigs she was like grabbing like hey I need this you know ship and sell here and my mom I'll, I'll start an online shop. Online shopping wasn't even a thing and my mom was already doing that. Or she would be like, hey, I want to start a magazine or hey, I want to do this coffee book for, you know, after the, the typhoon, she did like a whole project on that. So I saw that growing up of my mom, again, super stable job and still picking up like things on the side just because it was something that she was interested in. So I, I kind of really took that and like ran with it um and even when I left school I very very much against her uh wishes um she then later on did say like you went against me and you won that respect so (laughs) I actually got my mom to say that so uh very much that I I very much attributed to that absolutely and um I picked up on something that you just mentioned that your dad was working overseas would that have been the inspiration that then got you to want to um, you know, work with overseas companies, or was it a way that you could then be able to communicate with your dad, um, you know, while he was away? This was very much pre-instant messaging. So it was more of, um, well, my dad got me like our first computer. My dad got me our my first email address to then be able to email back and forth with him, which was still limited. Uh, um, but it was for me, really, I saw my mom with the super stable job and then I saw my dad with the overseas job, but he can't be, really be with us. And I, I wanted to find a middle ground where I could spend time with the people I love and still be have a, have a career that I love. Absolutely. And you went on and created, um, obviously, you know, your, your way up, you know, all the other jobs that you've done. Um, Like you said, you took over, you know, an editing book. Now you're working with what you term remote executive assistance um, in, in, in helping other small to medium businesses thrive. Tell us a little bit about what that actually means and, um, you know, what people are actually getting from the services that you're providing. Yeah. So for two weeks, I really wanted to think of a way of like, how can we make this different from all of the virtual assistant companies that were popping up at that time? Um, especially again, uh, two weeks, started right as the pandemic uh, was about to like, was brewing. Uh, we got our first client October, 2019. So it's like, okay, how can we make sure that we can one uh, be able to charge premium? That was kind of one of the things because then we can af- be able to afford to pay for um, better talent. And also at the same time, how can we differentiate where it's not just another recruitment company, we're actually a full service. So the way that we've done that is not only does we, we hire an assistant, we also train them. We, we give them our operations training, our project management training. And at the same time, they, be, they have what we call a pod manager who helps them in the background, make sure that all the systems that they have with their client is up, set, set up, uh, who does coaching calls, who, who does live trainings as needed. And basically, the when you're working with 2XU, it's not just you're hiding an executive assistant. You have a whole team behind that executive assistant who supports them. You know, if they need feedback on things, it doesn't have to be just directed to the client. They can run it through the different assistants in 2XU, get feedback, get, get uh, support basically um, before things happen. And kind of the magic that we've kind of built through it also as well is because we now have this big research library of signing up brain procedures from other assistants who work with us, um, with other clients, other businesses. So then they're not, Start, starting from scratch, they always have a reference point from what other people have done. Absolutely. So it's way better to actually get an executive, um, you know, assistant from you because they have a team behind them than just, um, you know, going to a freelance uh, website and hiring a freelancer who's only just going to be operating by themselves. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. Because it's, and you definitely can people and, and we've had people are I just outright it's probably best for you to start, you know, just hiring online and not with 2XU because for our service, it's really much more making sure that things are documented, you know, things are actually written down into a way where uh you could take four weeks off and your business will sort of keep running because things have already been written down by your assistant that they can they can handle the business without you. Absolutely. Now, you did mention the, you know, the category uh, floods that happened in, in the Philippines that also became, um, you know, part of your why. Is that the reason why you now want to also assist a million um, Filipinos to start working from home so that they're not tied up to their desks and they don't have to undergo what the trauma you went through? Absolutely. And and for me, it's then just having the freedom of not just having to work in office, being able to, you know, roam around, change change addresses if they need to, be able to, you know, uproot the, their family as need be, and then have better infrastructure also on where they're at, not just be stuck with where where they started. And also because here in the Philippines, like last year, we had another um, category five typhoon go through here and through the city that we live in, um, but we were able to rise up really quickly just because. All of our assistants had the resources through us of like, oh, we'll place you in a co-working space. Like, oh, this person is offering up their office space. They have internet. They have uh, you know, generation uh, generator, even though we don't have uh, electricity. So it's kind of that being able to fully um, embrace that you're not just another freelancer doing it alone. You have a whole resource of company who will be able to support you in anything that you need. Absolutely. And not only are you helping, um, you know, these small to medium businesses, you're actually uh, coaching them. And one of the things that you work with them is clarity on what tasks to delegate. Um, is it a big issue that you come across that small to medium businesses pretty much don't know or are not clear on what tasks need to be delegated when they are, um, you know, handing over their work to executive assistants? Oh yeah, it's one of the top mistakes that people usually make when they're delegating is that, oh, this this task is so painful. I'm just going to give it to this person. Number one, it's just sales. Like, oh, I want to give this all of my sales stuff, all of my closing to this assistant. But then the assistant doesn't know the context, doesn't know this and that. The magic is actually with you. You haven't actually extracted that magic into being able to give it to someone else. So that's usually where people fail at. And they say, oh, I'll never have an assistant again because they fail at this and that. Like, did you for us we, we have something called the 80 20 assessment from the 80 20 principle where we look at like okay this is your business what are things that you do in a day what are things you do in a week what are the things that are high leverage or basically the thousand dollar per hour uh tasks versus what are the ten dollar or even one dollar um tasks that you might be doing those then we can start delegating to your assistant and then having you focus on the that 20 percent that actually helps grow your business so that has virtually made you a big sister to all these small to medium businesses then by showing them the ropes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. It's, it's, it can be scary because especially if you've been just a solopreneur for so long, you don't know, okay, what do I give to an assistant social media email? So then, then we walk them through, okay, there's a process. We can figure it out. Absolutely. One of your goals is to um, create a business in New York. Why New York? That was a uh, 15 year old Leanne's dream uh, still. And I've kind of just carried it on in the last 12 years. I'm now 27. Uh, and it's it's for me still, and this is probably being Asian, being never I've set foot in the US just yet. Uh, it, it's just a really big thing where if I'm able to start a business in New York and people are fr from New York actually want it, I was like, Okay, this this is something that that I can have for the long term. I've had clients from from Australia, I've had clients from California, from San Diego, from the UK, everywhere else. Not yet New York, and I'm like, I'll get someone, <laughs> I'll get someone there someday. Um, but then that shows that we've I've developed a business enough that um people from that headspace from that culture um needs my service. Absolutely. You know what they say, if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere else in the world. So um, I was thinking that's that was the main reason. But uh, subconsciously, that would have been the pull to it, because if you can establish in New York, um, a lot of people would actually uh, view and value your business as having made headway. While we're working towards, you know, putting your business on the map in New York and everything else, um, how can people get a hold of you currently? 
So right now, two best places is uh, on my YouTube channel has all of my educational content on how to hire and also how to be a virtual assistant. Uh, and then, of course, for just reaching out, my LinkedIn is also very, very active. So those are two main places people can reach me. Absolutely. And um, what what can they expect, you know, from 2XU since you guys are on the rise uh, besides you setting up offices in New York? Uh, main one is that, uh, you know, it it's always a focus to know that it's never enough to keep growing your business on your own. And 2XU basically helps scale businesses um, in a way where you thought like, oh, I'm just hiring another VA. Nope, you're not hiring another VA. You're hiring your second brain. You're hiring a person who becomes your right hand. Uh, so then you can keep growing your business. Absolutely. Now, Leanne, I really appreciate your time um, with us on the on the call today. But there's always that one thing that's lingering, you know, in the head of any small to medium business. They always have this um, attitude that if you want to get anything done right, you do it by yourself. What what sort of last words have you got to people that are not, you know, willing to sort of uh, delegate and actually allow an executive assistant to help them really, really grow their business. A work that can be done 80%, uh, almost as 80% as, as you can is better than work not getting done at all. Because you out of the 10 things you're doing in a day, you're probably only ending up doing five. So then having an assistant who can do at least again, that 80% mark of like, good enough is better than not having them done at all. Absolutely. Well, in my culture, we do believe that if you want to go far, you go alone. But if you want to go further, you go together. So I really appreciate your time on the call today. And if you're watching this show right now, you can see that Leanne has been working from home since 2011 when she was 15. And now she's able to um, help other people and also other Filipinos to be able to work from home. And this is something that you can also look as you know, into how she has managed to do that. Obviously, it's been the help of other people around her that have been supporting her throughout all the way. So if you find yourself, um, you know, being frustrated or overwhelmed with the tasks that you need uh, to accomplish, I encourage you to jump on to 2xu.com. Check out what Leanne and her co-founding partner, Tom Tate, are up to. And if it's not about your work, you can actually just you know, do your part in helping other uh, Filipinos uh, be able to work from home so they can avoid typhoons or other weather hazards that might come their way. Now, Leanne, I could go on and on, but I think we really have covered all the bases and everything else that comes along with it. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much. It was fun. Fantastic.